Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's live water, watercolor session. I don't know, every time I say that, it gets jumbled. Anyway, my name is Sarah Giese. I'm an artist and a wife and a mom, and we've decided to do these um, watercolor tutorial sessions each day at four o'clock, um, just because it's a crazy time right now. We're all home, and we thought, you know what? Let's put a little beauty in the world. Let's give people a little tool to focus and get in the flow and calm their hearts. So that's the kind of thing we are trying to get happen here, get happen here. Um, I'm really glad you're here. I've been talking with several people from all over the country. I'm really glad you're joining me. I'm seeing all kinds of beautiful art you guys are posting each day. So thank you for engaging and being a part of this. Um, that's really uh, something in my heart to have a community of people who are creative and encouraging each other to be creative. So yeah, welcome. Join us. Thank you for joining us and join me with this painting today. We're going to do a uh, rainbow tiger. Somebody asked for a rainbow tiger. <laughs> so I went all out and made a rainbow tiger. So let's get started. <laughs> all right, so if you have been preparing for today, you will probably have this outline already on your watercolor paper. If not, it's okay. If you just popped on and you saw this is happening and you wanna make a watercolor rainbow tiger, this is your day. This is what you've been waiting for. <laughs> So pause it, go find the, um, the outline in the comments below the, this little video on Facebook. And you can print it out on your watercolor paper, you can trace it on a window, you can use uh, graphite paper, you could use a light box, however you wanna do that. Put that outline on your watercolor paper and then we'll be ready to paint. So if you still need to do that, pause it, come back in a minute. If you're ready to paint, and you have this, let's do it. Okay, so before we start putting paint on the paper, we need to have a little overview of how we made this thing, yeah. right? So, obviously this is kind of a wild and crazy painting, yeah? <laughs> so, um, the first thing we're gonna do is put all the color on. So we're gonna put color all over this guy. We're gonna make his eyes, and then, after the color is on, then we'll put the black in and it'll become more tiger shaped. <laughs> the first part of this painting is just gonna be putting color all over, similar to maybe if you've done the giraffe with me, we're gonna put color all over this, this little tiger. Um, it won't look like much, but once we start putting these black lines and all the, all the um, details in, it's gonna look really cool, okay? so. We're gonna be really flowy. We're gonna be easy with the, with the paint, just letting it flow around, um, making it a little wild looking, yeah? Okay, so first, the paint, the colors. All right. We can start with any color. If you want it to look like a, a regular tiger, you could put, it, make it orange, right? And then the black lines are gonna come in. We're gonna make it rainbow. You make it however you want. I'm gonna start with red, just because. I'm gonna go through the whole rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with my red. Now, I have to say, I do have several different reds. Um, if you have a paint palette like this, that's perfectly fine. This is great, and you might have multiple colors of red. If you do, I would suggest using one that's not blood colored. <laughs> Main one first, my first one was a true red color and it didn't, it looked a little scary, just saying. So a little purpley blue, it's a little bit better. Something with a little bit of blue in the red. I mean, blue in the red, like purplish red. So if you have multiple colors, you choose which one. Um, if, you, if you don't have this many colors on your palette, it's okay, you can mix colors. So red and yellow make orange, right? Yellow and blue make green. You can do all kinds of things with, with mixing colors, okay? So, or just use the colors you've got, right? If you have 10 colors, just use those 10 colors, okay? All right, so I'm going in with my 
red that has a little bit of blue in it. So it doesn't look like wood, okay? And I'm just going to go in in a really loose fashion and just put that paint around. I'm going to just put it wherever I will. <laughs> and I'm using a lot of water on my brush. It's okay to go over some of the lines. You'll see those lines later. But letting it really flow around is kind of the key for this part. Okay. Thanks for waiting. Uh, I was going to do this painting yesterday and I just did not uh, feel well yesterday. So, you know, in these times it makes me a little bit, I'm going to make sure I'm okay. <laughs> so, thanks for waiting if you were waiting on that. Okay, just putting this pink all over. It's kind of reddish pink color. All right. We can put, we can go back in if we don't have enough of one color or something, but this is really easy peasy. Just do whatever you're feeling. Okay. Now next color orange. Okay. I'm going in with an orange. I'm going to put that, I'm going to let that blend with the other color. I'm going to go in all around just to let it be. You can leave a little bit of white space as well. You don't have to cover, cover every inch. But, you know, just kind of float it around. I'm going to leave white under the eyes here, a little bit around the eyes, and maybe just along his, um, his mouth area and along these lines. But that's the only white parts that really, I think, matter. Just kind of let it be. And if the more water you put in, the more starbursty, little shapes will show up, you know, so let that happen if you'd like. All right. Doesn't that look great? It's looking like a big mess, isn't it? I promise it's kind of a fun transition. Turns right, turns into a tiger uh, right before our eyes uh, when we put the black in. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going in with the yellow here. I'm going to use yellow on his nose mostly, just letting it be soaked around. See, these are not precise brush strokes at all. <laughs> we're not shading, we're not doing any of the, those watercolor techniques that we've done in the past. We're just letting the watercolor flow around this time and letting it be wild like, like a tiger. All right. Now red, orange, yellow, green. Going in with green now. And I'll put a little green up here. Really, truly, just wherever you're feeling it. Now, as you're putting, those first three colors were um, warm colors. Now we're going in with cool colors. And something that happens when you mix cool colors and warm colors they usually turn kind of brown, okay? So you don't want to be mixing the green in with the orange so much because it will turn brown. So allow it to have its own space. But, you know, don't be afraid. You can go in there in little nooks and crannies. Just wherever. <laughs> this is one of those paintings that makes you just feel like you can get some, some aggression out. <laughs> Let yourself be free. Okay. There's a little green on that guy. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Okay. Nice blue. I think that's a lighter blue than I expected. Let's see if this one's a different color blue. There we go. So really this is like a rainbow, all the rainbow colors. Letting them mix around. Over here, I'm doing a little bit of wispy um, brush strokes so that I can kind of 
looks like a little bit of fur. We'll go in later with black and make that even more pronounced. Okay. But really just going in, putting color where, I, as I feel, I'm going to make his beard blue, just kind of let it be a little bit lightish. Blue color. And then working on, still going with blue. I've been researching for um, a little course that I've been writing about creativity in your family, creativity in yourself and facilitating that in your family, in your home. And one of the things that I've been learning is that sometimes you have to allow yourself to get in the flow, which is actually a term that's used um, in psychology. You know, it's kind of a, ooh, get in the flow sounds a little wooey, but um, it is actually a thing where you allow yourself to just focus for a while on one thing. You can do it while you're playing chess. You can do it when you're skiing, you know, when you're hyper focused on something, your brain is is focused on that one thing and you're allow you're allowing the rest of your brain to be at peace and it and it solves other problems as you're thinking about something else. So I would encourage you even as I'm talking your ear off <laughs> to allow yourself to go get into a flow, get into a space where you're you're concentrating so much that this is what the only thing you're thinking about. Okay, I know it's hard when you're a mom or you have worries on your mind, but that's kind of the point, right? It's kind of the point to let yourself, give yourself that time. I have a schedule, usually, it's all blown to pieces now with COVID, but um, usually Wednesdays are my day to be creative, and I, I kind of... Um, I guard it. <laughs> I guard it with my life. I don't plan things that day for uh, anyone else. I, I don't say yes to things. I make sure that I leave that space in my week just for painting, just for creativity. Not always painting. Sometimes I, I'll write. Sometimes I'll, you know, do other projects. But um, it is for my creative, my creativity time. Um, I think it's part of my self-care, <laughs> something that I need to do for myself. And I learned that a long time ago, but I forget and then I come back to it. <laughs> and I forget and I come back to it. Anyway, use this time for that if you can. Use this as your time. Okay, I've gone into my purple. You've noticed, I'm just letting it be all flowy. <laughs> it's, it's wild, I told you. It doesn't look like much. Looks like a crazy mess. <laughs> Sometimes creativity requires that you allow a mess to happen. <laughs> Most usually, actually. Okay. Now, we, we talk about this all the time, but when, uh, when you're using watercolor, it will dry lighter than it looks right now. So you can go in later and add more color if it's not bright enough. Make his nose yellow just because. All right. So we can go back in later and put more color. Um, once it dries, I am not going to do that because I need to have this dry so that I can put the black on. We want it to be totally dry. Now, if you at home are um, freer than I am, <laughs> I could pause it, but 
I don't have my hair. Oh, I do have my hair dryer here because <laughs> I use it. But if you can put your hair dryer on there and just really uh, put it hot, put it on a hot setting and dry that up real quick, um, it'll be a nice, a nice solid piece. Then you can go in with your, um, your black. But for me right now, I'm not going to do that since that's going to be kind of a, an annoyance on a video. We'll just let it be what it is for now. And I'll let this dry. So this is really <laughs> what we want. We want this crazy mess to look, be like this, okay? Now I did use, I'm looking at my, my colors. It's quite different, isn't it? Once I put the black on it, it will look more similar, but I did use a different color red, it looks like. I went even more purple this time. That's okay. Every time I do something, it looks different. Every time you do something, it's gonna look different. It's gonna look different to you than even what you think in your mind. It's gonna look different from anyone else's. So comparison is the thief of joy, Teddy Roosevelt said, and it's very true. So no comparing, no comparing from with mine or with anyone else's or with the, whatever's in your mind. It will, it will steal your joy, okay? Um, while this is drying, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tonight. I'm going to be doing a talk um, with some of my patrons. There's a website. It's kind of a platform called Patreon, and it's a community where you can subscribe to be a part of a creative community with me and some other people that also are part of it. We do book studies. We do paintings, which is going to happen next week, a Zoom call with a large scale uh, painting on canvas. Um, but tonight we're going to be doing um, our second or our third um, book study. It's kind of just a conversation really on a book called The Artist Way. It's a book called uh, by Julia Cameron and really truly it's been a shaping book for me. This is, this is the fourth time that I've been a part of, read this book and this is the first time I've been a part of a conversation about it. Um, it's been a personal journey for me, <laughs> but um, yeah, they, it, every chapter has like a, a whole section of tasks, she calls them. They're more like just activities that really delve into your creativity, why you are, who you are, what shaped you, what are the things that you really are interested in, what are you here for, and then uh, what blocks you, what's telling, what are the lies that you're believing? Um, that tell you that the, what you're doing is not worthy of being looked at or read or heard, um, depending on which uh, art form you're, you're working at with. Um, but truly, uh, it is written to artists, but it's truly like one of the girls in there, she's like a computer lady. Um, one of them is a uh, writer. So like all different forms of creativeness, creativity, um, this speaks to that, um, and the premise is, is that we are all creative. There's not one person that isn't creative. I hear that all the time. People say, oh, you're so lucky, you're so creative, you know, that kind of <laughs> talk. And I think, you know, I mean, I am, I am thankful that I, um, I have my expressions and that those things have been a part of my life, but I truly believe that everybody's creative in some way. Um, it is a skill. Uh, once you ha you take that creativity, you need to you know persevere in it to become you know skilled at it. But I think everybody has it in them. I think it's an innate characteristic of every human being because um, we're made in the image of God and God is creator. You know, however that all works out, um, we do have creativity in us. We we take what's in the world. And we make new things, right? Um, Madeline Engel is one of my favorite um, ladies. I think she's she's died since I don't know, just a few years ago, I think. But she's the she's the author of a book called um, A Wrinkle in Time. It's a kid's book. I remember reading that maybe fifth grade or fourth grade, something like that. But she's also written a bunch of other books, and she's my friend in my heart. <laughs> 
I know, I've never met her, but she someday I'll meet her in the next life and we will be friends. Anyway, she wrote a book called um, Walking on Water and it's all about creativity. And um, she says that cr creativity and art is taking chaos and bringing order to it. And I had to really think about that because I think sometimes art and, and expression doesn't look orderly, you know? But as I was thinking about it and as she explained it, it made more sense that we are taking things. Like if you think about this, this paint palette, these paints are just randomly placed here and I'm taking them <laughs> and I'm on purpose putting them on this paper in a chaotic manner right now, <laughs> but I did that on purpose. So I took pieces of what was already existing and I'm creating something else from those things in an orderly fashion. I'm putting them on purpose onto a new thing and, be, and creating a new thing. I just love that idea that we are taking things that are just out there that have their own order maybe and we're putting them together in a new fashion and creating a new thing. It's what we're made for. It's like something that about it is soul giving, uh, life giving to our souls. So I think we're made for it. Anyway, my thing is still wet. So let's do the, <laughs> let's do the um, eyes while we're waiting for the rest of it to dry. Okay. These eyes are just piercing. They're kind of scary looking to me, but this is what tiger eyes look like. I looked at all kinds of pictures. So we have the outside rim, which is black and we have the inside which is yellow mostly, and it has a little bit of orange at the top. See that? So we'll mix that yellow and orange. So I'm gonna go in with my yellow and just fill that, that eye in with yellow. I can, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but my 16 year old is practicing his drums right now. <laughs> We have a drum set in our living room because it's the best place for it, <laughs> but it's, it's loud. All right, so I'm putting the orange in on top here and letting it mix with that yellow, okay? And putting orange in again here on the side. allow it to mix. Okay. All right. Now the black. I'm, I want that to dry just a bit again so that it doesn't uh, bleed. We don't want this color to have any black in it. We want it to stay. Right here we have a little bit of blue in the eyes. That was just my little artistic thing. I did see that they have those little lines there, but I thought, you know what, if this is a rainbow tiger, maybe he has a little bit of blue there. I'm just gonna do that. Put a little over here. Since I have blue on my brush, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> okay, this look even scarier. It looks like a, like a zombie rainbow tiger shooting laser beams out of his eyes right now. Okay. All right. This is getting pretty dry up here. So let's do some black. Okay. I'm using a medium sized brush now. It is, um, a number four. Okay. I'm going to activate my black here and we have a little bit of technique happening with these black lines. We're going to go, little short brush strokes right next to each other. That way it'll look like a fur and it will make a line. Okay. So on your outline, we had some blocks. There were some kind of long skinny blocks. I put them there for reference so that you know that there would be a line there. Okay. And about how big. So you see that right here, there's a little bit of a thicker, line in the middle and it tapers off. So I, I drew that kind of a shape on your outline. 
Okay, so we'll just go around and make a lot of little black tick marks, basically, to make this outline. The, uh, the ears have lines around them, we'll do that. And the top is gonna be tick marks, just kind of small little brush strokes across the top, but in a line, so it looks a little bit furry, okay? We don't wanna have a straight line. It'll look like he, he got shaved and is bald on the top. Right, we don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my thing around and start on the very top. And I'm just gonna do that top line here. I need more water. See, we're just gonna go in and just make a just kind of a shaggy line. You see that? Okay, continuing down in front of the ears, similar. Oops, too big. Similar. And up on the ears, we're going to do a similar shaggy line. This is all furry, right? So kind of a shaggy. Small little brush strokes. And he has some hair coming off of his ear like that. Okay, and similar over here. Okay, see it's starting to take shape. It's starting to take shape. All right. Pretty dry. I'm going to go in this way so we're not upside down. Okay, so there's a line right here. So I'm just going to start like this and making tick marks close together. See how that is? And then I'll turn it. You know, when you were learning cursive and you needed to slant, I would say slant that way first, like left handed people, <laughs> and then slant to the right. Okay. That way it looks like he has a little bit of a, his fur would kind of go a little bit like that. Kind of like a part, maybe. Okay? So as we go down, we're gonna do similar tick marks all the way down. And let it be kind of a lifting up as you get down, get to the end of your tick mark. You're gonna lift so that it kind of has a shaggy end to the to the brush stroke okay if you have too much paint on or too much water it might want to start blending in with the with the other colors we don't want that. We want it to just be on top, be on top of the colors. I'm kind of sad that I'm having to cover up some of these cool starburst shapes that have happened on my tiger butt. Tigers must have stripes. They just must. Okay. Continuing on, now here, I noticed they had kind of little lines like this. So I, I just did something similar to what I saw. I think it sh kind of shows that he has a, a nose bridge there. Okay, so we did these little lines here, you'll see on the outline. And then these eyebrows were kind of spotty and mismatched a little bit, but they gave him a kind of an outline for his eye. So that's important. Okay. Going down. Starting to look a little bit like a tiger, huh? We're getting some shape here. 
Just filling in all those little boxes that I drew with these tick marks, okay? can't remember who asked for this t this rainbow tiger, but thank you. It was really fun to kind of figure out <laughs> how to make. Oh, there's such a cool starburst area right there. I don't, oh, it hurts me to cover it. I'm going to go around it. <laughs> Those are the things you can't do in, on purpose. And then when it happens, you don't want to just cover it. Okay, continuing down. <clears throat> Some of my marks are darker than others. I think I just had more paint on them, so I'll have to go back in a little here and there. Now along this edge here, I'm just going to do some flicking out like that so he looks like he has some fur on the side. Okay. I'm going to continue on this side. We'll do some more details in a minute around the face area. But for now, I'm just going to keep doing these. Filling in these little boxes with tick marks. Some of them are smaller than others, so just let it be varying. You don't want to have them all look exactly the same. He still looks like a laser eye tiger. <laughs> That's a cool spot too. Okay. Okay, along this edge here, we'll do similar to what we did here and just kind of make, this is the outside edge of the tiger, so we'll just allow that to be a little bit more shaggy. Okay, just a hint of the shag. You don't need to make it super, um, you know, perfect looking. It's not, this isn't that kind of painting. This is kind of a wild painting. Tigers, tigers need to be allowed to be wild, I think. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go in with some more detail, okay? We're gonna go in, you'll see these lines are black. These lines are black here, this nose area, and the little dots here. And then, you know, little here and there dots and around the eyes. I will um, go in with a smaller brush. If you don't have a smaller brush, just use the tip of a, a, a larger one, that's fine, okay? We're still just going in with, in with black, all right? So be careful that you're, you're not smudging anything that's wet, but very carefully go in. We're gonna do his nostrils real quick. So this area of his nostrils are black. So we're gonna go in nice and lightly and with precision. This is one of those, we're ending with the precision. The precise lines. We're going to make this part black. His little nostrils. All 
right? Now it comes down, straight down from this little area. And these lines here are very precise as well. So we're gonna go in and draw in their beautiful faces. Oh my goodness, it's almost like, is that for real? Can a cat be so beautiful? I think it can. They're majestic animals. Okay, very precise with your line there. Light, light as a feather. You don't need to push down very much, just very slowly. We have time. Let yourself focus and tell your brain to tell your body what to do. Okay. All right, right here is kind of a shadow, so we're gonna use little flick marks to show that that's a little shadowy area. Okay. Looks like he's purs pursing his lips. Okay, and then this beard thing comes down from the, the corners of the, the mouth area, kind of comes down this way and then has little whiskers that way. This is kind of gonna define his, his mouth area, his whiskers, okay? So we want that to be along the line where I put it. If you, if you drew your own, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> Made it your own. Okay, in the corners here, Put a little bit of a shadow. One of the things that I have done, do sometimes, is uh, I paint at conferences and I've done a couple of retreats and weddings and things like that. <laughs> Um, but one time I was doing this kind of a retreat thing. It was shorter than usual, and I was painting a tiger, and I got called out to go to a meeting, and I wasn't able to finish it. <laughs> and it ended up, it would look like this. It was like a zombie. And that was at the end of the conference. And I was like, well, <laughs> thanks for inviting me as the artist. <laughs> Here's an offering of what I made, a weird looking tiger. Yes. <laughs> I didn't feel comfortable with it. So I went home and I made a copy of it and I repainted it. I painted over it <laughs> just for my own sake. Okay. Um, let's do the little dots now. Okay, so they might be covered up now, it might be hard to see, but really there's just three rows of dots. They have very defined little whisker, whisker dots, I noticed. They were smaller at the front area here, and then they got larger as they went out. So if you have control of that, like go for it. They are really quite in, in a straight line. I'm just going out like that, okay? Those little details make all the difference, okay? So this side, we're doing the same thing. Just three dots. I mean, not three dots, three rows of dots. yourself focus okay now I'm gonna go in and put some little lines here and there this is up to your discretion this is just me feeling like I can I want to put a little bit of 
defining on his nose area, that snout, you know, just little lines here and there, little details. That's not necessary. I did see that they have some whiskers down below like that as well, if you want to put some dots there. Okay. All right. They have a lot of hair up here. So now that I have my tiny little brush, I'm going to go in and make some wispy little flicks of my brush to make it there. Oops. Their hair and their ears. Okay, let's do the eyes. And we're about done with this one. We need to do these eyes. I'm gonna turn my paper. I know it might be frustrating to you that it's continually upside down and sideways. Sorry. But really, when you're doing a painting, you gotta make sure you can really reach and not touch the wet. So that's what we're doing here. Now, I, I drew um, kind of like a tube around the eyes. They have very much shape um, like eyeliner around their eyes, black, black. Um, this little area is about the size of a small brush. So um, whatever your brush is, go just go around the eye with that, with that um, width of a line, okay? So we're gonna go in on the top and just go around. Now that it's dry, it shouldn't bleed too much, but I do see that I have a lot of water on my brush. We don't want too much. We don't want it to be bleeding into the eyeball. Okay, going around nice and slow. Kind of shaky. Okay, now over here where we put that little splotch of blue, we're gonna go on either side of that blue and just make lines like this on either side. Kind of comes down into that point in their eye like that. We'll just leave the little blue in the middle. Okay, just like that. Oh, it looks so much better with the eyes. Okay, eyeliner does tricks, does wonders. <laughs> okay, going around the eye. Slowly but surely. Is it Kung Fu Panda? My boys were little. We, that was one of their favorites. And the Master Shifu, he goes, your focus needs more focus. <laughs> I said that to my boys all the time. <laughs> your focus needs more focus. <laughs> okay. <coughs> We've got the eyeliner down. Okay. Last thing to do is the pupil. Now, if you have a white paint pen, you can um, fill that whole thing in black. If you don't have a white paint pen, you might want to leave a little tiny uh, circle of white just because pupils look better when they have a little bit of a reflection that's more natural. So I'll try to do that with my tiny brush. If you don't have a tiny brush and you're feeling out like, ooh, I don't know if I can do this and get it just right, use a Sharpie or a black marker, okay? That will work just fine. This is not a, doesn't have to be a watercolor thing, okay? 
So just leave a tiny little white spot if you can. I left my brush in my water cup and the little tip is going sideways. I think I might have ruined it. I need to look up how I can, if I can fix that. Because now when I go in, it's, it's not very controllable. Okay. Now if they're big, one's bigger than the other. Go in there. Okay, there's our tiger. Fun. All right. I did go in, you know me and my splotching, my, my throwing paint around. If you would like to do that, we're going to go in and do it. Um, it's not necessary. You could just leave him like this. He's just wild enough. He's just crazy enough. But, you know, it's fun. I'm going to do some throwing the paint. Okay. So we get our brushes nice and wet. And we let, let them flow all around. Okay. I'm going to put more water on and just let it be splotchy. Okay. There's the red. Now I'm going to go in with yellow. Lots of water on my brush and just splotch it around. It truly does look like the roller skating rink in the 80s. <laughs> What was the name of that roller skating rink? North? Hmm. Something. Something north. I lived in Minnesota. Everything was north. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do a little bit of blue too. Just, just because. Here we go. A little blue. Okay, it's, it's definitely wild and crazy. There is our rainbow tiger. Thank you for your suggestion. I will look you up, figure out what your name was for, for um, inspiring us to do that one today. And I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to do a sea turtle. That was another suggestion. So there's a little sea turtle. Oh, this way? This way? <laughs> There's a sea turtle for tomorrow. He's pretty fun. Um, and um, yeah, I pray that you have a peaceful, restful evening. Grace and peace and wholeness to you and your whole household. Thanks for joining me today. <laughs>